How you doing guys? Let's get a look at some traditional knives. Uh, this will be kind of loosely, loosely, okay? My top five most carried knives uh, in the traditional category. So uh, I do have more traditional knives than this, but these are what's been finding their way in my pocket uh, for the most part, okay? so. If I had to absolutely narrow it down, I'm not going to. This is a very traditional knife, but I, I don't really want to include it in this video. But you can't deny how useful this thing is, how awesome it is, and relatively how cheap it is. The Alox Cadet. Tons of videos. Everybody who's watching this probably has a at least one of them. If you don't get one, they're like... 25 30 dollars sometimes you can find them available in like any target so just get you one of those you know very functional i carry this one a lot i just i can't deny how useful it is so anyways if you're looking for like gc like more traditional knives as we know them or at least as we know them on on the youtube community uh this is is basically what my lineup is looking like not in this order but honorable mention would go to this one this is oh gosh now I'm gonna get confused this is the Viper this is the GEC Viper what I found as a secondary knife I'm trying to show you this is the number 47 as a secondary blade this is a little bit too large it does fit inside my watch pocket barely the top does poke out quite a bit uh, it's just a little bit too large for a secondary knife now this could easily if you're comfortable with just carrying a slip joint it's very pinch openable you guys have probably seen my review on this ranting and raving I still love this knife I just don't carry it as much as I thought I would I tend to go for knives that are just a little bit smaller in overall length and blade so if you go up against your hand, a lot of people just kind of, you know, do this to show about how much cutting edge is there. So at this point, when they get this large, this is almost a main carry, not really a secondary. So I don't really carry slip joints as my main carry. They're usually uh, like a secondary blade, something you throw in your watch pocket. I love this. If you can track one of these down, the Tom's Choice Barlow, you guys, if you're familiar with my channel, you know all about it. It's a great knife. It has the perfect amount of cutting edge. You can see it's not quite as big as this. And you can find these, not dressed up in the Tom's Choice, but you can find this exact configuration, single blade, with the sheep's foot, long pull, in the GEC 15. You can see it's, it's a shorter knife little more secondary use usefulness if that's a word if that's a term single blade I like single blades for the most part on my slip joints because I wear gloves a lot when I work and I can just pinch them open I don't have to worry about digging my nail in here and opening it just pinch them open love it cannot recommend the 15 enough in the sheep's foot configuration some you'll even find with a uh, easy open notch in here I don't think you need it I think it looks great it does add a little bit to the opening ability but you can really just pinch that and open it as it is love that this is possibly my most carried one why it was super cheap it was like $65 delivered A little bit of monster <laughs> I just I love this knife I love everything about this knife I probably should do an entire video on a update review of this knife it's a beautiful worn cleft blade this is the no frills tidy Ute version there's no milling on the bolster there's no cap on the rear uh, it's not stainless line. This is the bare bones Micarta version 
with what I like to call the hot dog shield. That's a bar shield, but I think it's more fun to call it a hot dog, right? Love the green micarta. I carry a lot of green knives. Not necessarily this one today, but it goes great with anything. I just love green. I love their 1095. Uh, now, I've mentioned the price, $65. It is a great, useful tool. Very well made, but it's not perfect. There are some imperfections on mine, and I assume at $65, there's going to be a few on yours. Will they be the same imperfections that are on mine? I don't know. If you're buying one new from a dealer, maybe have them open your tube and check this out. My spring is a little bit uneven here. I can totally forgive that and embrace it as character. My blade's nice and centered on this one. Uh, you know, I'd like to see that straight across, but as a useful knife, again, for $65, that may sound like a lot if you're not into knives and if you're not a knife person, but I promise you it is not a lot of money for how much quality you get here. You can pinch open it, does have a half stop. Let's talk about why I love this knife so much. The grip on this knife is incredible. This kit comes down and almost hits exactly flush with this bolster and lets your finger come right up on that cutting edge. Perfect. In the reverse grip, because this is like a Eureka Jack pattern, meaning it's got this hump here, your fingers, two fall up front, two fall in the rear, your thumb falls right there. Great, this is awesome. Even in this grip, this kind of kicks up like a sway back type design. We're gonna get to that one next. See how this kind of kicks up. This also kicks up. And then the way this rounds up here, your fingers just follow it back. I can't say enough good about the GEC Talon, especially in this Warren Clef single blade configuration. This is the 92 model, single blade. I just like them because I can pinch them open super easy. If you're going to get one, just don't expect perfection in fit and finish, especially being their tidy out line, being the bare bones. This is Micarta on this one. They sell them in any flavor you want. But anyways, I love, love that. I probably carry these two the absolute most. Not saying they're my absolute favorites, you know, but they're up there. If I had to do, had to do a top five and only save five of my traditional knives, these would make, all these would make it. So, there you go. Then you guys know all about the case Swayback Jack. If you don't, get familiar with it. Uh, possibly check out my video I've done on the past on this knife. I still feel that same way. Um, it is a double blade, two blade here. You got your little pen blade. Has a nice pull on it. If I had to say on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably say about a 6. Very user friendly, but still sturdy. I don't feel like this is just going to snap shut on me if I just bump it. Case is CV is a great steel very similar to 1095 some think it is 1095 I don't know they just call it CV great knife I love the utility how this blade is about the perfect size for light like package opening box opening opening you can see it's a little bit shorter than the talon one thing, it's a little bit short if you want to peel an apple or something like that. I don't peel apples personally for myself, but I have kids. They like their apples peeled and cut. You know, so so this is a little more useful for me. But for box opening and stuff like that, the shorter blade really, it's like holding a little razor blade in your hand. Again, in this reverse cut, the sway back really shines. It's a great knife little bit of the knock on it is you can't pinch this open because that second blade there they do make this in a single blade maybe I'll pick one of those up one day but I don't know case did a wonderful job on these 
something that you don't see GC do is bring that back spring up. And a lot of cases don't either. This is just on this sway back jack. On the pen blade, the spring comes up and around for a more finished look. All right. So, and then of course, how could I forget if I had to do a top five? Oh, possibly one of the best GEC knives for the money. Again, this was only like $65. This was what I would call a sprint run, but it's a... Uh, Wow, what do they call these? I'm gonna have a brain fart. Where they're like a dealer run, special run. This was a special run for Mike Latham at CollectorKnives.net. This has the canvas micarta. I love GC's 01 tool steel. Gets very sharp, stays sharp for a long time. It's still a carbon steel, so you still get that lovely patina. I just feel it holds an edge a little bit longer than their 1095 and it's supposed to be a little bit more uh, durable like as in chip resistant stuff like that. Although 1095 is no slouch. Just 01 is a little bit different. I think it holds an edge a little bit longer. I love everything about this knife. I really do. The grip in your hand. There's a lot of times at night when I'm walking around in my PJs and I'll just throw this daddy in my pocket. And while we're watching a movie or something, I just have it in my hand. This Micarta, if you guys know Micarta, all Micarta does this, but it just has a beautiful, warm, almost velvety texture to it. I like Micarta. Micarta is a pain to work with, but I love it when it's done. And then you've got your nicely done flush pins here. Of course, your front pin. I've already done a review on this knife. But if you're in the market for a well-done Sodbuster style knife, this is a Sodbuster frame. Something you can pinch open. Really look at their bull nose. This is from their Farm and Field series. And it's model number... What is it? A 71? I think it's a 71. Anyways, easily in my top five. Love the 01 tool steel. I love the grip on this knife. It's it's nice and fat. This is a workhorse of a slip joint. Nice stout spring, which has enough leverage when you pinch it and pull it out. This is probably an eight or a nine pull. If you had to use your nail on this, it's not quite a nail breaker, but it's a bear trap. And you want it on a hard working slip joint you want it to be nice and sturdy right but it's still user friendly I could pinch this open with gloves on I've done it that acts as a traction point you just grab right here and pull it out it does have a half stop easily in my top five and then how could I deny the most gorgeous slip joint I believe I've ever laid my eyes on the Ivory Fremont Jack from Northwoods. Look at that warm, creamy ivory. And then I polished this one up. You know, Northwoods normally ship with the scale, the heat treat scale on the top. Of course, this one's taking on some patina, but you can see I've cleaned this one up a bit. I keep this one polished. This is a 1095 blade. But you know what, on this very gentlemanly knife with the creamy ivory, I did have it in a patina and you know what, it just didn't feel right. This feels right on this knife, this high polish on the 1095. And it's pretty easy to keep your uh, blades nice and polished and upkept. You keep a light coat of oil on there. If you cut any fruit or anything, rinse it off and dry it off. It's not a big deal. So you can still use this knife and keep them shiny. You can with all your 1095. I just choose to let it go patina, you know? But I love the design of this knife. The sleeve board pattern here gets up fat here, tapers down to the rear end. Beautiful, what do we call this? Warren Clef sheep's foot? I don't know, it's pretty pointy like a Warren Clef, but then it's got a lot of nose. Let's call it a sheep's cliff. 
it's a hybrid with a nice swedge gorgeous gorgeous knife i think derek over at knife ship free has a hard time keeping these fremont jacks in stock in any flavor whether it's uh the bone or the the canvas i handled one the other day that was um this micarta here beautiful handled another one that was dyed blue camel bone gorgeous just gorgeous and then if i had to do a runner-up just being real with you guys i do carry this one quite a bit this is the northwoods uh what do they call this dog leg is the pattern i don't know what they call it let's see if we can get a model number on it for you no no model number look it up I don't know. I like this pattern a lot. It locks right into your hand. The S serpentine shape of this knife is nice. Because of the way your handle holds it, it's like it's got a negative blade angle. We've already discussed that a bunch on my channel. When you're holding this straight, the blades kick down. Really puts a lot of pressure on this belly. Gorgeous, rugged look. I believe this is the primitive bone. See, it's not quite. You've got thin here, thicker over here. That's going to drive some people nuts, but it's the random, natural nature of these knives. You can actually see how it's slim up here, but thicker on this side, slim on here, and that's the same uh, cover, right? And then it's thicker up here, and then it gets slimmer down here. I love it. I love how primitive it looks. I love that natural looking pattern there. I don't know if that's the outside of a horn or bone or whatever that is, but it's gorgeous. Love this knife, but it wouldn't make my top five. If you notice something, I really mostly prefer a straight edge on my slip joints. Just being me personally, this is, you know, something I carry around the house at night although I do leave the house with it and there's sometimes where I'll leave the house with something like this and this or something like this and this this is a great combination although it's not often usually I carry a titanium folder these are secondary knives if I had to list them in order of pocket time they'd be like these two are probably tied but it probably would go mostly carry this one because of how cheap and replaceable it is these are running about $300 on the aftermarket now. I know, they've they've gone crazy. Then this, and then this. I love this knife, but I like to keep it nice and shiny. I like to have that warm, fuzzy feeling, as corny as it sounds when I carry it. So when I go to a wedding, or when I had my father and daughter dance, when we had the Valentine's Day, this was in my pocket. Uh, you know, kind of my special occasion knife. When I leave the house with this knife, usually it's the only knife in my pocket. I don't even carry another slip joint or locking folder with it. You know, it's just a gentlemanly, gorgeous, gorgeous knife. One of the, the prized pieces of my entire collection. And the fact that it was a gift from a, a really good friend is, you know, adds a little something to it too. So there you go. There's my top five. Of course, that's not my whole collection. If you want to include this in there, I don't. I couldn't bump a knife out to put this one in there. But this is very traditional, very useful, a great knife. That's it, guys. Hopefully, you have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one.